may have heard, heard my, my message, so I will skip the, the, the challenges and this one, the, the map of the uh, COVID-19 is very clear uh, to everybody. So let me start from here. Basically, this uh, you know threat, the COVID-19. Can you see it now, Brian? Yes, yes, we can. You can see the slide. Yes. Okay. So, so basically, this uh, uh, COVID-19 caused you know a major uh, you know what we call social shutdown, basically, and it was it was moving, spreading very fast. You can see this uh, slide. It was generated by uh, IEA that showed uh, by end of March, for example, 4.2 billion people. Uh, were subjected to complete or partial uh, lockdown due to this uh, you know, uh, virus. And by end of April, within one month only, the entire globe, the entire population in the globe was affected by some sort of uh, lockdown. And, and this social lockdown basically, as we, ex we expect, uh, you know, caused a reduction in the energy uh, consumption. Uh, you know, for example, in April, almost 50% of the global primary energy demand was, was, was affected. Uh, and and you know, the, the estimate uh, for the full year is for the, for the, the entire global uh, you know, uh, primary energy demand to drop uh, by, 60 per, by 6%. And 6% is huge by itself. And if you quantify it, it's equivalent to basically the 2019 demand for France, Germany, Italy, and UK together. And, uh, and it is seven times the impact of the 2008 financial crisis. So it is, it is really uh, huge. And if you look at the, the category of, of those, uh, you know, primary energy demand decline, you can see as expected, you know, because of the social uh, uh, lockdown, oil, which is heavily used in the, in the transportation sector, was the major drop, uh, uh, you know, uh, we expected almost 9% uh, uh, drop during the year 2020 compared to 2019. So the magnitude of this decline has no precedent in the last 70 years plus. It's very major and it's, it's across the entire energy uh, uh, domain basically. It's not limited to oil and gas. It's also, uh, it includes coal, uh, nuclear, uh, the only exception is, you know, again, this is an estimate. It could it could change uh, with time. The renewables are expected to to have very slight grow growth of less than one percent, uh, uh, which also shows a great negative impact because it was projected uh, much much bigger than uh, than this. But the message from the slide is that oil is the major, you know, the, the biggest decline. Uh, uh, followed by coal and followed uh, by uh, gas. So if we look at uh, basically uh, the impact of this on the, in the, on the oil sales, for example, you can see this chart that shows uh, uh, basically the decline uh, um, uh, per month. And you can see, uh, for example, the, the, during quarter one, there was a drop of 5% in the oil demand. Uh, and, and the second quarter, that, that that decline increased to 23%, and it, it's expected basically uh, to be, uh, you know, um, uh, to be averaged as nine, at 9% during 2020. Uh, uh, you know, uh, th this is how much really, uh, you know, uh, a decline we, you know, we expect to see in the oil uh, side. Now, if we, if we look at the, how much oil sales lost, if, and if, if we do very simple calculation, this is. You know, a senior, uh, uh, you know, uh, probably a freshman student, uh, you know, uh, can do this calculation. If we uh, if we look at, for example, Brent, uh, a January average uh, price around sixty dollars, and and if we consider a loss of uh, uh, you know uh, nine percent equivalent to nine to ten million barrels during 2020, uh, with with an, an estimate of uh, 2020 average Brent price of 40 percent. You can basically calculate the, the, the you know the loss related to the oil sales uh, uh, you know to be equivalent uh, almost eight hundred seventy six billion dollars. Now, if you focus, if you zoom into into April, you know April as we said there was a drop of almost twenty eight million barrels of oil consumptions per day during the month of April. And if you, you all remember what happened in April, the the free fall of the oil price and the negative. Uh, pricing of W uh, of West Texas Intermediate, uh, uh, and if you if you zoom into April alone, you know the last uh, 
the, you know, the simple calculated cost was, was around 116 billion. Now, this is with the assumption that there is no uh, major second wave happens on, on you know, uh, in the globe. So uh, there was a study that, that also uh, made, an you know, uh, this assumption and that, you know, uh, basically uh, found that if there is a major global second wave, you know, the, the, the amount of oil demand that declined during 2020 could average between 13 to 14 million instead of 9 to 10 million uh, barrels per day. And if it is such, the loss would be very, very close to $1 trillion. This is very simple calculations. We're not talking about also gas, uh, you know, loss. We're not talking about, you know, the, the additional operating operation cost that that uh, that our industry is is paying to fight this this uh, pandemic. Uh, so so this is this is how much dollars basically uh, our uh, industry can lose due to due to this uh, uh, you know unprecedented threat. And again, as you said, uh, as I said before, the most of the oil demand uh, you know because we, as we know, eighty percent of the oil is used in aviation. You can see this. Uh, these two charts showing, for example, by April, 50% of, of uh, vehicles activities disappeared from the world all of a sudden. And, and uh, as far as the aviation, uh, it's 60% disappeared. 60% of, of the aviation just disappeared from the picture uh, due to this pandemic. And of course, if you add to the 60% what was, uh, you, know, the, 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 you know, the growth that was expected to happen in 20. Uh, 20, as we know, aviation, for example, you, you know, uh, was estimated to grow between three to five percent per annum, or even more sometimes. So, if you add the expected growth with the loss of 60 percent of the aviation, you can really see the magnitude of this, uh, you know, uh, problem. Now, uh, as as expected, that would have uh, impact also on the energy investment, basically. Again, the 2019 investment in energy sector, you know, to compare it to, because we need to, to have a reference. So if we make a reference, uh, the 2019, uh, which is, was around $1.9 trillion, uh, the, the before, nine, before COVID-19, 2020 investment was estimated to be around $1.94 trillion, so additional 2% growth. Uh, but after COVID-19 uh, investment uh, in the energy sector, and I'm talking about all the energy sector, basically, and not only oil and gas, is expected to, to be uh, around 1.5 trillion with a drop of 20%. So instead of growth of 2%, we, we uh, you know, the, the, EI, the IEA study shows a drop of 20%. So there's a loss of almost $370 million, billion. You know, uh, the, the study split this into, uh, you know, uh, the major loss that will be in the shale oil. Um, uh, as expected in the power generation and the energy efficiency projects, uh, the coal as well. And I just want to say that the conventional oil and gas, there is no data so far for that. So that could be even more, uh, you know, uh, as, as time uh, goes on uh, and, and more data revealed. Uh, I just want to make one comment here because we always in SPE look at the long term supply demand gap. You know, we always say, our industry is a long-term industry. You know, uh, for us to put in a, a barrel into the market, it, it takes probably three to five years of, of development. So, so uh, we, uh, you know, expect if, if, the, if the demand start increasing as we expect, uh, you know, in the, in the third and fourth quarter, possibly approaching the, the, the 2019, um, sometimes in, in the second or third quarter of 2021, we anticipate, you know, a gap uh, in, in the supply demand. Uh, maybe last year, uh, the, last, the, the end of next year or the year after, which is something that I think we uh, only the, those who, you know, uh, you know, plans, you know, for long term, uh, will will basically get the benefit out. Uh, so this is something that we always talk about in my presentations. I always say the smart uh, is is those who really plan for the long term and be ready uh, whenever you know the, the 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 market pick up and the demand the demand pick up uh, you know to make up any uh, any gap in the supply demand uh, you know so uh, 
if we look at what happened on the human resources, uh, this is a painful, uh, you know, uh, a subject, the thing that really, you know, um, you know, make us really um, sometimes not sleep at, the, at night, you know. Um, there were there were major uh, you know job layoffs not only in the oil and gas industry by the way you know, in most of the industries at large you know I don't want to quote uh, certain numbers you know in certain uh, countries but the, I'm sure you all read these in the, in the newspapers and the, you know um, and, and the news channels as well you know all industries were affected by this you know and, and, and major layoffs in all industries and the oil and gas industry is is no different basically than others. So, but just if, uh, quoting several examples, again, I'm, I'm not going to mention names here because that's not the objective of, of this. Uh, you know, I, I'm going to just say IOC number one, IOC number two, and, and so on. So for the international oil companies, for example, uh, you know, there were several, uh, you know, uh, companies announced release, uh, you know, between five to 10 percent, uh, uh, and sometimes up to 15 percent. The national oil companies uh, also uh, have some cuts with less extent, and I couldn't find any official announcements for the national oil companies. Uh, so that's why I'm not sharing a, a figure here. The oil field surfaces as well uh, got really the big hit, uh, possibly of the COVID-19, what's called, uh, you know, uh, oil price crash. Um, you know, the major uh, oil field surfaces, uh, you know, uh, totaled almost more than 20,000 job, uh, job uh, uh, lost as well. Um, and of course, uh, you know, several studies as well showed also, you can see them uh, in the references mentioned in this slide, uh, uh, you know, several uh, sectors lost, uh, you know, including the clean energy sector in the US. Uh, one point to mention here, you know, most of the data uh, mentioned here are, uh, you know, for, uh, you know, companies are, uh, that are U.S. based because, again, you know, uh, they were officially announced. But unfortunately, I couldn't find anything, you know, uh, outside of the U.S. Uh, that was officially uh, announced. So there is a major uh, layoff. And that's, again, that's the painful thing that, uh, that as I said, makes us sometimes um, cannot sleep at night, but it's, it's something that's happening. You know, we've seen it definitely in the oil and gas industry during the downturn in the past, and we see it uh, today as, as, as well. And again, I want to say again, we, uh, we I think in my opinion, the smart uh, companies, those who always think of long term, you know, we know that after any downturn there is an upturn, and we know that uh, after uh, any decline in the demand, there would be an increase in the demand where you, you will need more people, basically. So, uh, so the, the smart people who would really harvest that opportunity, uh, you know, and, and uh, you know, plan uh, strategically for the long term. Now, the only positive thing uh, that I that I can find in this, uh, you know. Uh, pandemic is the CO2 emission as expected, you know, you know, there is this, you know, major drop in the global CO2 emission, surpassing any previous declines, you know, the, as a matter of fact, the annual emission in 2020 is set to decline at an unprecedented rate uh, to the almost, to, to be almost twice as large as all previous declines since the end of war, uh, World War II combined. So, so this is something positive uh, that, that I think uh, I don't want to claim credit for, no, that's not what I'm saying, but it's, it's again, a positive product of uh, the, the decline in, in the energy at large, not only the oil, but, or, but the energy, including coal as well, and other energy sources as well. Uh, I just want to, want, I want to make one point in this slide that we, you know, we in SPE uh, basically um, uh, established a solid foundation to, you know, to to, uh, to strengthen this sustainability, uh, you know, uh, environmental agenda in the last two to three years and what we call neutral carbon agenda. And I think we should tap on this uh, strength that SPE introduced, you know, uh, you know, through defining what we call energy transition, through in introducing concepts like natural, uh, neutral uh, carbon uh, uh, agenda or, you know, a carbon circular economy, uh, and, and working towards the long term of, uh, you know, you in reaching neutral carbon agenda by 2050 or, you know, 
you know, later than that date or, or, or so. Uh, this is something that I think we need to push, continue uh, doing. SPE is, is, is doing it as we speak. We've established a very strong, very solid program, very solid uh, uh, you know, community to take us really to the 2050 and maybe later, maybe 2070 uh, target of zero carbon emission uh, uh, industry. In other words, basically we want to still continue to use oil and gas, but address the carbon uh, uh, emission that comes out of it through different technologies, through efficiency, through carbon uh, capture and sequestration, through carbon storage, through carbon conversion and many many other uh, you know, uh, excellent ideas that uh, we introduced through this agenda and SPE. Um, uh, let me share with you the response, the energy response and, reco and recovery of this. You know, although we are still in the middle of it, you know, but I think, you know, uh, I always say, uh, you know, uh, I raise my hat to, the, uh, to, to our industry for really their, their positive response and, and recovery plan. Uh, uh, basically to address this threat. The first thing that we've done as an industry is really to maximize the safety of our people. That is really the very first, people, uh, first thing that we've done. We ensured that the safety of our people, we introduced new business models, working from home, tabbing on technology and, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, and, and, and uh, protecting, uh, making sure that our people are uh, protected, not only in the offices, but also in the field and the regs and the facilities. And that's the, the you know, the, the second uh, thing that we have done, which is to ensure the business continuity, because as, as we speak, although uh, we lost almost 20 million barrels a day of, our, of, of oil consumption, there's still, you know, the world is, you, is using, you know, 80 million barrels per day of oil and, and, and uh, you know, 100 billions of uh, scuffed of gas per day as well to keep it uh, uh, you know, powered uh, and, and running. So to ensure the business continuity also, we ensure the safety of our facility as well as uh, uh, our people working on, on the facility. We also utilize advanced technology as we speak. Uh, we introduced a new, what we, what we call the new norm, you know, working from home uh, and you know, uh, tabbing on, on, on uh, social, uh, you know, uh, 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 dialogue uh, technologies, uh, you know, like, like virtual meeting technology, like the one that we're using uh, today. Um, we also mitigate supply chain risk as well, because it's not only us that, uh, you know, uh, basically the world depend on uh, to supply almost 55% of its energy intake, because we use, uh, you know, basically materials, uh, you know, uh, provided to us by our supply chain. So we need to make sure that not only us, our facility, our people are protected, but also our customer, our, our, our contractors, our supply chain also is, uh, are protected so that, uh, that uh, you know, we can deliver the required uh, amount of energy to the world. We also developed our people, uh, uh, you know, management skills, how to deal with the crisis. As I said, this is unprecedented uh, uh, threat that we see when it comes to, to a pan the, the pandemic. Uh, coronavirus. Uh, continue, you know, we also continued corporate social responsibility was something that really I feel proud of seeing several uh, IOCs and NOCs, for example, and, and oil feed services companies continuing their social, uh, corporate social responsibilities, helping the societies around them uh, uh, to, to fight this, this uh, enemy. Focusing on reliability, safety, environment, cyber, and, and most importantly, the, the energy security, you know, we, we, we know how, how uh, big uh, threat that, that is, and we've seen this, uh, for example, in the, in the uh, terrorist act that happened again as the Saudi facilities last year, for example. So these are, you know, uh, top priorities for us as an industry, reliability, safety, environment, cyber, as well as the energy security. And last but not least, we collaborated with, with others, including governments, to enhance the supply demand balance and I would like to mention really the credit that should go to OPEC plus uh, uh, really to, to you know to meet uh, and decide on, on, on uh, you know a, a historical uh, agreement to reduce the, the oil production by almost between nine to ten million not only reduce it but also comply with that with, with a factor that could range between between something like 85 to 100 percent 
uh, again, that is unprecedented uh, event that happened, led definitely by uh, you know Saudi Arabia and by Prince uh, Abdelaziz bin Salman, our energy minister. And we hope that this will continue to help our industry. So we know that we cannot fight this enemy alone. And that's why collaboration is very, very uh, uh, important factor. We collaborate with our supply chain, we collaborate with our governments, we collaborate with our societies, and, and, and uh, uh, we collaborate with everybody basically to address this, this challenge. Um, so, so basically, uh, uh, what happened, for example, uh, for the, you know, I, sh I shared with you what happened in the society, uh, sorry, in the industry. Let me share with you what happened in the professional societies. And I'm not going to talk all, about all upstream professional societies, but more, because they are more or less the same, basically. I'm going to focus more on SPE because I, simply I have the data with me. So um, we've seen dramatic negative impact on, on SPE membership, you know, drop of around between eight to 10%. Dramatic negative effect on SPE events, several canceled and deferred, dramatic negative effect on SPE finance, reduction in revenue that could reach you know, up to 50%. Negative effect on sales, marketing and advertising, you know, we, we're developing new models now for virtual events and digital venues. You know, uh, these are very challenging and, and evolving as, as, uh, as we speak uh, as well. Uh, so the question become, uh, come to, you know, the, the, the question came to us, uh, especially in the board, in the SPE International Board, how to convert this unprecedented challenge into opportunity. How to look at this challenge and convert it into opportunity, basically to provide better services to our members. And that's exactly what we did. And that's basically what they call technical delivery recovery, the plan that we have done. We converted some of those challenges into opportunities through deploying digital technology to reach bigger audience and members through virtual workshops, the webinars, talks, as well as virtual conferences. In the past, basically our biggest conference, uh, you know, the annual conference, you know, uh, attendance could, could you know, uh, range between eight to 10,000. Today with the virtual technology, we can reach the 150,000 members that we have around the world, basically. Uh, as a matter of fact, we can reach even uh, you know, uh, non-members globally. Most of the, 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 the people work for the oil and gas industry, I think, today have the capability to join us, whether in a vir virtual uh, uh, leadership talks, uh, virtual workshops, uh, virtual webinars, or uh, virtual uh, conferences. So this is an advantage. That's basically what I said, converting the, the challenge into opportunity for, for SPE and for the industry at large. We're enhancing SPE product services to keep pace with the expectations of the young, uh, younger members tabbing on SPE app. We introduced the, the, the SPE app last year. Uh, uh, and, and this is a, you know, a, basically a tool that reach uh, our members 24 by seven, basically with alerts and, and announcements. For example, if there's an event or uh, uh, talk, uh, leadership talk, uh, you know, live leadership talk, you know, the, uh, the, the app sent basically uh, uh, an announcement on our, or an alert to, 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 uh, to the members, uh, you know, allowing them to click a link and, and basically watch that, that event. So they, the, the, the SPE app, I think something that I highly encourage all of our members, as well as non-members as well, to, to really download uh, and uh, get, you know, the benefit out of it. We're also tabbing on the Industrial Revolution 4.0 technologies uh, to introduce new services basically uh, uh, to our members. So we're developing new business models. We're trying uh, to, for example, the annual technical conference this year in 2020 will, co will collocate uh, with uh, SEG, uh, uh, the Society of Exploration Geologists annual meeting in Houston. So uh, there's a possibility even for, for uh, you know, um, joint, why not joint uh, events with other uh, professional societies. So that, that opens a new business model for the society uh, at large. Now the finance recovery, which is big as I've, I've shown before, uh, we're securing government funding to assist uh, SPE wherever or whenever that is uh, 
uh, you know, available. For example, I'm just quoting a few examples. The U.S. Payback Protection Program, the Canada Payroll Support Program, we're also securing funding from SP Foundation. The SP Foundation is, uh, uh, you know, a, a non-for-profit foundation, uh, uh, you know, um, it's board, uh, uh, all ex-SP, uh, you know, uh, presidents, uh, basically help the, the, the society through fundraising and so on. So we're tapping on that, uh, you know, uh, organization as well. We're optimizing operations, limiting staff travel and delaying some low priority activities. And we're tapping on SPE investment. Also, we have good investment in SPE uh, uh, that we're keeping, uh, helping us uh, during the downturn. And of course, we're developing uh, new advanced member services that possibly will be introduced uh, at a later stage to our members, uh, you know, for, for uh, a little cost. So these are some of the recovery, uh, you know, factor, the recovery plan that, that we do in the SPE International to help us to basically, uh, you know, uh, address this huge challenge. So uh, my takeaway is really, uh, again, um, to summarize, uh, my, my, my takeaway is always, you know, uh, like in with with optimism you know i, I always uh, I'm, I'm i'm optimistic in, you know by nature um we have really to adapt to the new norm you know uh, um the quantification itself as i see it today is incomplete and the reason why it's incomplete because you know we're in the middle of it uh, uh, so so more and more quantification uh, uh, studies needs to be done to really uh, comprehend, uh, the, you know, the, 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 the impact, the negative impact of this uh, threat. Um, uh, one thing to say here uh, for, for, the, for the quantification, I would love to see some of the uh, petroleum research studies centers to address this. Um, uh, the more studies we have uh, related to this, the more, I think, uh, confidence the more uh, uh, knowledge we have, uh, you know, in quantifying uh, the impact of this, uh, uh, you know, uh, threat. Um, the, in my opinion, uh, the corporate, uh, you know, the, 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 corp the corporations around the world and the professional societies also are being transformed as we speak today in what we call the new norm. We're tabbing on new skill sets uh, for our professionals, uh, we're equipping them with the new business and risk models, uh, you know, starting this year, I think everybody, you know, whether it's, it's uh, private IOCs or NOCs uh, or, or uh, uh, professional society, all including uh, the pandemic as part of their strategic threats and uh, embedding it into their DNA and, and preparing basically, you know, uh, a contingency plan if something that like this happens in the future. So we're changing in what's called the new norm. Uh, the way that we conduct our businesses now, the way that we conduct our law meetings uh, is, is quite different than, than uh, you know, um, uh, pre-COVID-19, if I may say. So, so the entire, the entire uh, society as well as the industry is being transformed into this. Again, we're tapping on technology and luckily technology is ready for us really. We're so lucky because technology is, was ready and is ready for us to help us to achieve our objectives and do our business uh, at the high standard. Uh, uh, I also expect the demand to increase in quarter th in three, uh, starting quarter three, slightly possibly, but but you know, uh, gradually until we reach maybe uh, you know the 2020 original uh, uh, consumption, sometimes maybe in the second or third quarter of 2021. Uh, and and um, again, uh, having this in mind, you know, uh, our industry must not lose focus on the long term to take advantage of the future demand supply gaps. This is something that I addressed many times in my in my uh, presentations in the past. I think we should continue focusing on the long term, and, that, and that's why I feel, you know, I, I feel sad when I see any layoff uh, in our industry because I think the smart guys who really think strategically uh, in the long term. And last but not least is I think, as I said, we cannot do it alone. We have really to collaborate with everyone. OPEC, 
IEA, uh, the International Energy Agency, you know, governments, uh, energy ministries of energy around the world, uh, international oil companies, national oil companies, uh, independent. I think all must really co to collaborate together uh, and 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 uh, you know uh, help really to help the industry at large really to uh, number one uh, you know uh, pass this. Uh, you know this this threat number two to be ready for uh, for you know any similar or even uh, bigger threat than this in the future we would like to build strategies really to immune you know our companies and our societies really from from any threat in the in the future and and, and to, for us to do that we have really to think out of the box we have really to to collaborate together we have to um, focus uh, on the long term we have to develop uh, you know uh, uh, you know skill sets you know uh, related to uh, you know uh, management uh, you know uh, during crisis uh, and, and and immune our our people and immune ourselves and our organizations from any threat in the future and as i said again i would like to finish this presentation by saying again the job is incomplete. So if I am a professor in a university and I want to give the industry a grade today in the quantification of COVID-19 on the oil and gas industry, it would be IC or incomplete. I will not give it A, I will not give it B, I will not give it C. I will give it incomplete because I believe that you know, a lot of work needs to be done you know, by our industry, you know, um, I would like us, the industry to do this, uh, uh, this type of work. And I rely heavily on the many uh, petroleum research studies centers that, that uh, you know, we know, uh, whether in the, in the Gulf region here in Kuwait and in Saudi Arabia, uh, in, you know, in other places or in Europe or the US as well. Uh, I would like them to do it, uh, you know, for us uh, and, and to have uh, you know, unbiased uh, look, uh, you know, uh, a comprehensive look of this, uh, of this threat. That's all what I have, Ibrahim. Uh, I don't know how would you take the questions. Uh, so, uh, first of all, thank you, Professor. I think everybody benefits from that. Uh, you can either Raise your hand and I will unmute your mic or you can send a message on the uh, chat box. Okay, so we have a couple of questions, Professor. We'll start with uh, Fahad Al-Gahtani. So Fahad Al-Gahtani, I will unmute. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. على هذه المحاضرة ويعطيك العافية دكتور سامي على هذا البرزنتيشن الرائع ويعطيك المشكور عندي أكثر من سؤال وأسئلة متعلقة بالبرزنتيشن وغير متعلقة بالبرزنتيشن لكن أخوي إبراهيم كم لي سؤال أقدر أسأله سؤال واحد أو سؤالين أو أقدر أسأل أكثر من سؤال والله يعني حسب الوقت بس يعني نحاول ممكن نعطي خلاص راح اسال سؤال هنا الله يعطيك العافيه يعني بالنسبه بالنسبه للكربون اجنده نيوترال كربون اجنده اف يو كان بليز دكتور سامي الابريت مور اون ذيس از يو هاف مينشن ذات ذير از ا فيجن 2050 اند 2070 ويل بي ا زيرو ايميشن سو هاو دو يو ثينك ذيس ويل بي اتشيف Uh, while uh, most of the com uh, most of the industries uh, in uh, GC countries or in the world are working independently uh, on this carbon agenda. I mean, carbon uh, not investing more in carbon uh, capture. Second uh, question is uh, the uh, shale oil projects. Are there any projects uh, going on? in Saudi Arabia or Kuwait or in GC countries. Thank uh, you. Okay, the first, the, uh, those are not related to the topic, but anyway, let me go quickly through them. The, the carbon agenda, again, this is something that, uh, that was my focus during my uh, SD president, presidency. 
basically. And, and, and uh, you know, basically, we are introducing uh, what we call neutral carbon agenda uh, to the world, basically. And uh, the good thing, uh, I, I, first of all, I don't agree with you that, that there is nothing happening in the industry. You know, uh, there is uh, something happening. Uh, there's a lot, a lot of talk nowadays in what's called carbon circular economy, at least in Saudi Arabia, for example. The minister, our minister, spoke about it several times with, with a vision of basically uh, tapping on every single carbon atom, uh, you know, uh, uh, produced by, by, uh, by uh, you know, any oil and gas uh, uh, molecule, um, you know. So, so the, the agenda is basically to, uh, to basically um, address every single carbon that we introduce into the air due to, uh, the, the, you know, uh, burning oil and gas, simple as this. And we can do it in, in many ways, for example. Our agenda include, for example, uh, number one, uh, you know, uh, what we call the carbon capture and sequestration for EUR is something that, that we can use and increase our recovery, uh, you know, by, by carbon uh, sequestration. We can also uh, look at carbon sequestration and storage by just sequestering. We can also address it from uh, energy efficiency, improving the efficiency. For example, I can quote, for example, Saudi Arabia, for example, you know, we have a national uh, efficiency program that uh, improved the efficiency of air conditioning by almost 57%, uh, you know, at a national uh, level, if you can imagine. The, the air condition in Saudi Arabia, for example, uses 70% uh, of, the, of the electricity, almost 70%. So if you improve its efficiency by, by 50%, 57%, you significantly reduce the carbon image of your, of your, uh, of your uh, energy consumption. We can also look at into carbon conversion. Carbon conversion, basically you capture carbon and you convert it into new, uh, new products. Uh, this is what's called carbon circular economy. And there are many ways that we can also address it, uh, you know, through what we call tree uh, planting, planting trees. And this is an initiative that SPE, for example, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, introduced by, by, uh, by planting one million trees a year, for example, by its sections and, and chapters globally. Uh, so, so you can do a lot really when it comes now, when it comes to 2050 and 2070, and that's, uh, there is no a solid timeline, to be quite honest with you. This is, this is again, speculation that, that uh, you know, we would like to, uh, you know, uh, basically uh, facilitate uh, through SPE, you know, uh, help the, the industry to converge together and work together towards this vision of a neutral uh, carbon uh, future, if I, if I may say. Uh, so that's that's basically our program. It's, we have very solid community. You can join our community, by, by the way. Uh, you can go to SP Connect and go to sustainability. You can you can link with them. You do know, you should you, yeah, you will be able to learn their agenda, their conferences, their workshops. Their their uh, they have also live talks uh, as well. Uh, uh, so you can join them uh, if you are interested in this in this domain. The second question is, he said, unconventional. You know, again, um, uh, I, uh, for Saudi Arabia, it's, it's ongoing. Yes, I'm not sure about Kuwait and other uh, DCC countries, but, but for, for Saudi Arabia, they have very aggressive and conventional uh, program, and it's, it's continuing. It's, it's really continuing with us, despite this, uh, you know, uh, pandemic. So for the other GCC, I'm sorry, I don't have the data to share with you. Back to you, Brian. Okay. Uh, thank, thank you. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you. Uh, now, Walid Abdulhai uh, from SPE Abu Dhabi. Um, Salam alaikum. Uh, thank you, Brian. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you for for uh, thank you, Doctor Sami, for the great presentation. Uh, it was really well comprehensive presentation, uh, live and fresh uh, updates and figures uh, within during this pandemic situation. Um, I just want to share, I like the statement that shows that you just raised it earlier, which is starting with, con uh, you know, converting the challenges into opportunities. So, and I have two like fresh examples. I just want to share it with you sure. and with the colleague. Yeah, yeah. So, Okay, you know, like a couple of weeks ago, we, um, we, we conducted the Petrobol competition 
uh, within SBE Abu Dhabi. It's for the MENA area region. And it was all for the first time in, that, in, in our area and the first time as a virtual. So having like more than 25 universities in 11 countries. And that was really a challenge virtually through online first time you know everybody is doing it and again it happened and it went successfully and by the way Kuwait University they hit the first and uh, the two uh, universities they hit the third and the fifth and congratulations for the all but the message here it's it's happening through virtual I mean so you can give another question or another point just an example this like today's session is like a crystal example like i know our colleagues in kuwait this be i really appreciate also for inviting us on, on on this session conducting like a special session having you dr sami as our sp 2019 president we have also mr qasim qayumi the middle east and north africa director also with us and the colleague from sp abu dhabi so all these and different areas are having one session through virtually so this i believe it's a crystal example of converting challenges into opportunities. Thank you so much again, and sorry for the long term. Thank you, thank you, Ali. thank you. Thank you, Good to have you, uh, Now, Rakan al-Shiba. Rakan al-Shiba. Assalamu uh, alaikum, Dr. Sami. Uh, yeah. I'd like to thank you uh, personally and uh, Kuwait University SP chapter uh, for this great opportunity. Uh, this is Rakan Shibu from Saudi Aramco and Nes Tahran Section Technical Program uh, Chairman. Uh, Dr. Sami, you talked about uh, the challenges and uh, the things we need to overcome during this pandemic. Uh, can you please shed some, some lights about uh, the opportunities, especially for uh, the young senior professionals and for the business uh, entities, the service providers for, uh, in this sector? Uh, for scouting a new new opportunity during the pandemic and to be sustained even after the pandemic maybe new technologies new uh, things to be immersed uh, i think that's 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 very good question uh, um, and that's i think what I what we expect uh, um, you know the industry at large whether it's corporation or it's uh, you know uh, or iocs nocs or, or uh, oil field service companies to to think about really how to convert those challenges into opportunities, really, and and uh, I, I gave an example of SPE, for example. You know, one one example of SPE that I've mentioned, we have the opportunity today to reach the 150,000 members, you know, uh, instead of a few thousands coming into an uh, into our annual event, for example, and and uh, you know. Uh, Looking at opportunities, for example, for, for oil field services, uh, you know, um, virtual, uh, you know, um, you know, um, meeting is, is, is something that, that became the norm now, whether it's for the oil field services or uh, IOCs or NOCs. Now, to be quite honest with you, now in my workplace, I, we will have a challenge in the future to call for face-to-face -face meetings now. With the, with the technology evolving around the virtual meeting, uh, there, you know there, you can think of many opportunities. Like for example, uh, the, the the you know four D printing, for example, is something that a technology that I think you can use, for example, to help uh, in this pandemic. You know, growing this technology, uh, 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 adapt, you know, uh, Building that that infrastructure and, and your facility to rely on the, on, on, on themselves instead of uh, you know uh, on on their supplies just in case if there is a, a pandemic ha happening around them um, um, you know tapping on on artificial intelligence for example uh, drones though I think the drones are very scary now uh, you know with what's happening. Uh, you know, by Houthis and, and others, uh, but but uh, drones also could be an uh, opportunity where basically, uh, you know, you can do a lot of, uh, you know, manual work that we used to do in the past, you know, uh, can be done uh, through through drones, you know. Uh, basically, you can, you, can, you can zoom into what's called Industrial Revolution 4.0 nowadays, really. Uh, you can look at virtual reality, for example. You can put, uh, you know, uh, special glasses and and then you can walk into a, a plant and and help fixing uh, an equipment uh, or for that for the, for the oil field surfaces you know run along 
you know, from from uh, your office, your headquarters, for example, through this augmented reality and virtual reality. Many ideas, really, as you can think of, you know, uh, but all would require new skill sets, really, you know, tapping on advanced technology and IR 4.0. Um, some of the soft skills that's all, that also that needs to be developed is how to manage during crisis. This is something that, so, you know, not all of us in, in, in the industry, you know, uh, focused on in the past. You know, uh, it's something that we need also to to invest in and, and make sure that our engineers, when they when they develop themselves, you know, they develop uh, their skill sets not only in the technical side but also in the soft skills and management, uh, uh, you know, uh, side as well. Okay. Uh... Dr. Abdullah Al Mansour. Dr. Abdullah Al Mansour. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Good evening to all of you. And uh, first of all, I would like to thank you, Dr. Uh, Sami, for this great and such excellent you know, presentation and uh, for this uh, rich details uh, that we really looking you know, for it. Uh, I have uh, like uh, one uh, question and another suggestion. Uh, the question is, Doctor, uh, you mentioned in, uh, during your presentation that collaboration is one of the of the important things that we should have to overcome this challenge or this issue. And uh, to be honest, unfortunately, I didn't see any collaboration between the local entities during the COVID-19 or like, you know, with uh, foreign companies that you know related to oil and gas industries. This is uh, the question: Why we didn't have this yet? I didn't see this appear yet. Uh, let me uh, tell you about myself. Like I'm the head of the petroleum department at uh, King Abdul Aziz City for Science and Technology. So now you can know where I'm, where I'm working in, uh, which is, you know, a research uh, institute in Riyadh. Uh, my suggestion is it's better, you know, to have or hold, you know, SPE conference event during this year or next year that only focus uh, in an issue such as, you know, COVID-19. What's the challenge? How can we overcome this challenge? So based on the studies that focus only in this area, I think we will get such a huge ideas and solution that will help us, you know, to treat the problem uh, easily and uh, overcome the problem uh, with a short time. Thank you again and uh, really appreciate it. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Doctor. Um, again, um, the collaboration, um, and again, um, when you talk about, for example, countries uh, and major companies, there, are, there, there is some collaborations happening. And I think uh, the example that I've mentioned, which is OPEC Plus, uh, this is unprecedented. What happened in the month of April under the leadership of Saudi Arabia is something that's unprecedented, really. Without that collaboration, probably, probably we, we could have still uh, in the in the in the 15 16 dollars a barrel uh, you know uh, uh, range uh, but with, with that great uh, you know collaboration uh, and and, and the, the most important thing not only the collaboration but also uh, in the compliance the compliance to the agreement as well um, something that happened between also Kuwait Saudi Arabia and and UAE as well something that probably universities are not aware of there was there was also a kind of collaboration to further cuts in addition to the, the 9.7 million of OPEC plus plus there was additional cuts volunteering uh, you know uh, production cuts by Kuwait Saudi Arabia and UAE uh, that also an indication of collaboration at a higher level at the minister of the ministry levels as well so there is but I agree with you. Uh, when you talk about uh, research institutes uh, in the area, universities in the area, I think we should strengthen uh, uh, the collaboration. We tried our best uh, to do it through SPE. Uh, by the way, we, we established uh, a kind of uh, colloquium, uh, uh, um, you know, that, that basically connects the, the, the universities teaching petroleum engineering 
together through SPE. Uh, as a matter of fact, we have one of the, the, the non-voting uh, Middle East uh, board member uh, from, from the academia to basically to establish that, that uh, group and, and facilitate the collaboration between, between the universities in this, uh, this region. Um, uh, your, your proposal for the, for the conference, I think I fully support it. And um, possibly I hope that, uh, you know, maybe uh, we have uh, Asim, maybe, and, and Faisal and Ghamish, both of them are the Middle East directors. Uh, um, they are here with us, maybe hearing this, maybe it's, it's, a, it's an idea that, uh, you know, we should take. Uh, it, it could be either a, a conference by itself, uh, you know, about this, or at least, uh, you know, um, part of, for example, the MIOS next year, for example, 2021, part of it could, could, could be, uh, you know, uh, basically addressing this uh, COVID-19 or similar threat. Uh, okay. Nasser, 